Well, because these measurements are so laborious and because they take so, so long, oceanographers have also looked at other methods for measuring primary production in the ocean. <clears throat> oceanographers are looking at methods that just simply estimate how much phytoplankton are there. And because we know phytoplankton have chlorophyll, we may be able to just look at chlorophyll or changes in chlorophyll concentration to say something about the growth rate of plants. Now there's just some assumptions and some difficulties in just using the amount of a plant to measure how fast it's growing. Um, that would be like taking your weight and saying something about how fast you're growing. There's a few assumptions in there, so it's not always the best technique, but it does give some estimate of the biomass or what we call the standing crop of phytoplankton. And one way to do that is through something called fluorescence. Now, fluorescence is the light emitted by chlorophyll when it's illuminated. As you recall, when we um, talked about chlorophylls, chlorophyll is the primary light absorbing pigment. Well, some of the light that's absorbed by chlorophyll is then turned into chemical energy. It turns out also that chlorophyll re-emits some of that light. It actually re-emits some of that light as red light. It's that red light that we call fluorescence. So chlorophyll absorbs blue light. Some of that energy is used for the various things that it needs to be used for, but some of it is actually emitted in, in an uh, I want to say an accidental way, but that's not it, in an incidental way as fluorescence. It's just a byproduct of the light absorption process of chlorophyll, this red fluorescence. Now you can't see it because it's too faint to be detected by our eyes, but we can detect it using instruments. Here's what it looks like. In both of these vials we have samples of chlorophyll. Here's a sam here you see this green color this is really just uh, acetone that I bought at the hardware store and some spinach that I put in that acetone for a little while and extracted out all its chlorophyll and here you see this green color. Now this vial is being shaded, this back vial, vial is being shaded by the front vial which looks a much different color altogether and what you see in this front vial is this red color. Well that red color is Fluorescence. Fluorescence is, again, a byproduct of the absorption of light by chlorophyll. And by using fluorescence, by developing instruments that we can use to measure this under natural concentrations, now I know I just said you can't see it, but here we have a very unlikely situation. We have very uh, unnaturally high concentrations of chlorophyll extracted in a vial. You're never going to see this in nature but it gives you the sense of what this color is and what it looks like, again, by using instruments called fluorometers that measure this fluorescence, we can tell something about how many phytoplankton are in the water column. And a very good friend of mine, a colleague, uh, a man who um, really got me started when I was an undergraduate counting phytoplankton at the University of Washington, Carl Lorenzen, who's since passed away, uh, a very dear man, a good man, um, invented one of the techniques for looking at fluorescence for measuring how much phytoplankton are in the ocean, what's called in vivo fluorescence. So we can look at in vitro in glass fluorescence, which is what we just looked at. We can look at in situ fluorescence for living plankton or what we call uh, in vivo fluorescence, uh, a technique invented by Carl Lorescence. And in doing that, basically we're stimulating with an intense blue light and reading off the amount of fluorescence that's produced in instruments, again, called fluorometers. Well, it turns out that fluorescence also happens as a result of sunlight. And it's that natural or solar induced fluorescence that I want to talk to you about next. But let me just uh, mention, first of all, fluorometers really provided one of the first ways of instantaneously measuring something biological in the ocean. Rather than having to take water samples, which has really been the way oceanography has been done for, you know, 150 years and, and even now we still have to take water samples for certain things. But by able, being able to put instruments out 
that measure the amount of phytoplankton, the amount of chlorophyll, for us, for biological oceanographers, it was a godsend because there was really no other way to do it other than extracting water and going through all the chemical analyses, the laborious filtering and all that kind of stuff. So it really began to put us on par a little bit more with the physical oceanographers who had these electronic instruments for measuring conductivity and, um, and temperature as well. So now oceanography, biological oceanography is expanding its ability to instantaneously measure a biological property in the ocean. Okay. So what I just talked about was stimulated fluorescence, and what I just mentioned to you a minute ago was natural fluorescence. Fluorescence also occurs as a result of sunlight. And again, this is the one that you can't see, but we have instruments to detect it. And in the late 1970s, as we began to lower instruments into the water column that could measure different colors of light, an instrument called a spectroradiometer, oceanographers noticed a curious thing. They noticed that red light didn't disappear. Now by all our theories and everything we know, red light from sunlight had to disappear in the surface waters because water absorbs red light. But there was still this faint glow of red light and ocean arbors were writing their notes so maybe something's wrong or the instruments messed up or something like that. Finally someone figured out it's the plants glowing. It is solar induced fluorescence, natural fluorescence, that's a byproduct of photosynthesis in the ocean by the phytoplankton. So it really opened up our eyes to a potentially a new way of measuring photosynthesis in the ocean. This is a picture of a spectroradiometer. Here you see this hockey puck on the top, which is measuring all wavelengths of sunlight coming in from all directions. Here we also have these little what look like golf balls sitting on the top. These are used for measuring light coming from all directions. Uh, of different wavelengths, but there's also a similar set of instruments, a similar set of hockey pucks and golf balls on the bottom of this, and all these are used to measure different wavelengths of light and different properties of light. Understanding, the goal is to get an understanding of the light field and the colors of light in the ocean. Well, we can outfit these instruments as well for measuring this property called natural fluorescence or solar induced fluorescence. At the bottom of this instrument, which is an instrument, again this is in uh, Bamfield Strait off Vancouver Island, in this instrument we're actually, there's a detector at the bottom that detects the red light that comes from the phytoplankton. And here you can see the this, this sunlight, what we call the photosynthetically available radiation sensor or PAR sensor that's measuring how much ambient sunlight is available and this is the natural fluorescence detector. So imagining again as we have more sunlight you should have more fluorescence because phytoplankton are photosynthesizing faster. They're absorbing more light and letting more light released is fluorescence. As light intensity is reduced then we have less fluorescence.